I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Man, got a radio show. Man, yeah, I do. Steve Harvey got a radio show because uh, I I can't tell it to you any other way because God has been so, so very amazing to me. But the same God, and there is but one, that same God, is, it can, and will be amazing in your life if you just allow it to happen. You know, uh, I was somewhere, you know, and I was driving uh, on the freeway somewhere and I saw a billboard uh, and it was a guy in a field on his knees and on this billboard it said something to the effect when when you've run out of answers, try prayer. And I was I was going uh, somewhere. And I, I don't even remember. I, I go so much, man. I I, anyway, I was just going somewhere, and I saw this billboard, and 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 I thought about that. And man, I I I cannot tell you how true of a statement that is. When you've run out of answers. When you don't know what to do, when you feel weak, when you are at a low point, when things just seem to keep happening to you and you don't understand why, prayer is an amazing weapon. Prayer is available to all of us. Here's the deal. You don't have to go through the all that you're going through alone. See, and I'm talking to men, women, boys, girls, students, leaders, bosses, employees. I don't care what's happening. I don't care what your situation is. I don't care if your relationship is all jacked up. I don't care if your kids and your relationship is jacked up. I don't care if your relationship at work is shot. Your coworkers seem to always make you the buddy end of the joke. You always, somebody always talking about you behind your back. You're finding it more and more necessary to try to hold your head up and walk past these people when some days you can't even get your chin up off your chest. If, if, if you're a woman out there and you've been alone by yourself for so long and you're just tired of being alone, you really want a relationship. You really want to be have a, a mate. You want to meet your soulmate, whatever it is. Whatever it is, prayer is the answer. 
you you are listening to a guy who is a direct recipient of prayer. I I can't tell you anything that I've gotten out of that I didn't pray about. Oh, now, there are a lot of things. Hold on. Let me backtrack a little bit. There are a lot of things that have happened in my life that I've gotten past without praying because I think my mama was praying for me. And then there's this thing that God has called grace and mercy that he just somehow keeps us all waking up every day with our foot on some form of solid ground because he's just waiting on us to come to him. But y'all, if you can implement prayer into your day, every single day, and I'm talking about put it in there at the top of your day, put it in there in the middle of your day, put it in there when you close your day out, when you sitting at your desk and ain't nobody bothering you, that's a good time. Now look, you don't have to make no scene you ain't got to let everybody know, oh, I'm spiritual, I love God, look at me, oh, I'm down. You ain't got to do none of that. Matter of fact, don't do it for that reason. Because if that's your reason for doing it, that's going to be your reward. If you want somebody to just say, oh, they pray every, you know, they pray at lunch and they had a Bible on their desk and they have a bunch of highlights in it. If you're sitting it out there so people can see that that's what you do, then that's going to be your reward. Please know, you, 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 that's, that's going to be your reward. What I want you to do is pray. Ask God for the things, the desires of your heart. Have a faith. Believe in them. But pray earnestly, man. I mean, actually go at it with saying, hey, God, listen to me. I can't do this without you. I need your help. Listen, man, I know a lot of people that pray. I know a lot of it. If I told you the rich and famous that I talk to that pray constantly, it would amaze you. Go talk to God about it, man. Matter of fact, you done already got yourself into trouble. Go talk to God about it. You can't see no way out. You're in a situation, you're thinking about doing something straight crazy. Pump your brakes, partner. Slow down a little bit, my man. Slow down. Don't, don't. All you're going to do is make the situation worse. Go over there today and talk to God. Talk to God for real. Just, and look, man, you know what, man? Sometimes I've gone to God and I've just said, hey, God, I don't have a clue. Matter of fact, I'm so jacked up right now, God, I don't even really know what to ask you for. I just need some help. I'm so deep in some mess right now. Not only can I not see the way out, I can't see my way around. There's a a poem called Invictus, and the opening line says, Out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank God for whatever be for my unconquerable soul. That it, this line is so deep. It starts off saying, I am in deep trouble. I'm in a pit. Black as a pit from pole to pole. I'm talking about, man, from over there to over there. It's pitch black. And, and, and man, that's, man, you, you ever been in that situation before, y'all? Because I have. I'm talking about Black as a pit from pole to pole. God is there. God is available. God is always standing by. He just wants you to come to him. See, he been coming to you a whole lot of times. He's presented himself. I can't tell you how many times. He's shown you how good a God he is. He's given us all grace and mercy without us asking for it. He's gotten you through some things, and you looked at him, boy, oh, man, I don't know how the hell. Okay, that's cool. I'm cool. No, 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 no. That wasn't cool. That was God. Pray, man. When you're out of answers and you don't know what to do, pray. If you see some trouble coming, pray. If you already got into it, pray. If you don't know the answers, pray. If you can't see no way out, pray. Pray, man. Talk to God. Don't make a scene. Just talk to God. All right? Very important. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Yeah, Steve Harvey Marty Show is on in full effect today on this very, very blessed Monday morning. We are here, live, vivid, and living color. Well, the weekend of celebration will probably continue. I want to again reiterate on behalf of myself, my almighty bad morning crew, Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Kia Spates, J. Anthony Brown, and the magnificent one, uh, Thomas Miles, better known as the nephew. And, of course, behind the scenes, Mippy, uh, Mississippi, not not Mippy, <laughs> Mississippi Monica, <laughs> and uh, Dave Hines, and Crystal, and Cat Dog. <laughs> who work uh, right, tirelessly uh, pulling off what we managed to pull off this year. Yeah. We want to thank all of our listeners for showing up at the polls. We want to thank yeah. of all of our cities for showing up, proving that black lives not only matter, black votes yeah. matter too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on. Mm-hmm. You will find out one way or the other the truth about us. We still have some work to do down in Georgia because they – if you listen to Fox and everybody, they are calling it all a fluke. They're supporting the presidents with the allegations of cheating and deception and a fraudulent election. All of a sudden, mm. wasn't no fraudulence going on in Nebraska. It didn't happen in Ohio. No fraudulence happened in North Carolina. Nothing fraudulent happened in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Missouri. Nothing happened fraudulent where he won. Yes. But everywhere he lost, all of a sudden, it got fraudulent. Uh, they're gonna go. They're gonna go through some changes, but but we're gonna prevail. But we still have work to do in Georgia. We'll be talking about that today, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Harvey Morning Show. We we so strong. We don't know what to do. <laughs> we just over here popping you know out collars. Hey, we don't. Hey, we but don't. Steve, you're, you're right. We're so grateful to our audience. You know, we're so grateful to you guys that you got up and got out and showed up and showed out at those polls. We really, really are. Thank you so much. I mean, we started, Steve, at the beginning of the year. Yeah. We were telling them at the beginning of the year, and here we are, the 11th month of the year, Mm -hmm. and our listeners got it done, man. And we prevailed, and we prevailed in spite of all the attempts. You know, it's amazing Mm -hmm. how they want to sit up and talk about the mail-in vote can't be route can't be right. you the one hired the Postmaster General, and yep. he started taking mailboxes out of neighborhoods. Right. Y'all, you, mm-hmm. you knew it was legitimate, and you tried to delegitimize it by your form of voter repression by, taking, by getting rid of mailboxes. But we fooled you. We kept coming. Back. We kept registering. We, we, we kept did. voting because <laughs> your president wouldn't tell y'all that the coronavirus and the pandemic was real. And our and leadership told us it was real. So we weren't going around standing in them lines right up against each other. We mailed our votes in. <laughs> Sorry. <okay>? Done. <laughs> All right, Steve, Sorry. coming up in 32 minutes after, ask the CLO right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, it was an historic election. Joe Biden, Vice President Joe Biden, was elected president of the United States on Saturday, beating Donald Trump. We got to say congratulations to Kamala Harris, becoming the first black woman to be elected VP of the United States. Congratulations. We're so happy. Meanwhile, Donald Trump, uh, the current president, has not conceded and... (laughs) Because he left. conceded. Because he conceded. That's what <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh-huh. To the left, to the left, okay? Trump still hasn't conceded and continues to push the falsehood that the election was stolen from him without any evidence of wrongdoing. I mean, nothing whatsoever. Nobody, nobody in his party has anything. And the support that he's getting from his party is absolutely ridiculous, ridiculous. at this point. And so, you know, I'm just I'm, I'm just looking at him. It's just par for the course. If you think that Donald Trump can act any differently than he is after four years, I mean, we can't expect him to invite right. Biden to the White House. I don't even think he's going to be sitting at the inauguration. You know how the old president always mm-hmm. sit there while they <laughs> the take the president. new oath? Yeah. Oh, no. Uh-huh. He ain't finna do none of that. <laughs> no, 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 he, ain't no. fin- he ain't finna do none of that, man. He ain't finna uh-huh. do that. 
Uh-uh. No. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because they normally sit down and have a conversation with each other, right? No, well, that ain't yeah, fitting yeah, to Biden. Biden hasn't been invited. Right. And Obama, came, not of course, invited. invited. And invited Trump, and they had yeah. a conversation for about an hour or so, whatever. But I mean, that's just what you should do. But you know, mm-mm, he's not going to do it. No, let's go, yeah. Shirley. Yeah. Time. All right, yeah, let's get to the <laughs> CLO. Uh, it's being sponsored today. Check this out, guys. We're going to go rogue right now. CLO is sponsored by the all new 2021 Nissan Rogue. The Nissan Rogue is a spicy car for spicy people. And our listeners that submit these questions are very, very spicy. And uh, have that good old rogue attitude. And that's what we love. Okay, Steve? The CLO. (laughs) This one is ready from, uh, this one is from Janelle in Charlotte. She says, I'm in my mid-20s, and I just met a great guy through a mutual friend. When we first met, he commented on my designer clothes, purse, and shoes, and I told him I work hard and my parents still spoil me. Truth is, I've been the side chick to a pro football player for three years. He bought me the condo that I live in. I have not had to work in three years. It's a great setup, but I'm lonely, and I want to get to know the new guy. Should I go for it? I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Mm. Well, right, yeah, you should yeah. go for it. Now, the worst that can happen is, see, the worst thing that could happen to you is also the best thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You should go for it, and then the worst thing is you won't become the NFL player side chick no more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. But you could become someone's main chick. Mm. Speak on it. So mm. now you have to make a decision. Side will always, the side of the house ain't ever been turned into the front of the house. To the front. Mm. I, don't, I don't know if you've ever known that. If you go around to the side, go round don't back. look on the side. <laughs> Put it over there, hide it on the side of the bed. Right. <laughs> See, ain't, ain't nothing good on the side. Now, mm-hmm. if you want to stay a side chick, stay with the NFL player, you got your little bags, but you ain't got Money. nothing else. Remember something that I had to teach somebody once. Lifestyle Mm -hmm. requires your life. Mm. If you sacrifice something for a lifestyle, all it's going to cost you is your life. You can't get a lifestyle without the life. You take life out of it and what you got? Nothing. Style. See, so a lot of people go for (laughs) lifestyle and don't realize you got to give up your life to do it. Now you lonely. (laughs) But you got a condo, though, Steve. Yeah, I got all this here with a condo bought. <laughs> At least that's good. What are you going right. to do? I'm going to take it back? Well, I'll tell your wife. Oh, uh-huh, <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. See, and that, she's that, in her mid 20s. She's got a lot to learn. Yeah. yeah. All right. Samira in, uh, or Samira in uh, Houston says I've been married for nine years to a great man, but a boring lover. My best friend is married to his best, and uh, we've all been friends for 20 years. I confided in my bestie about my terrible sex life and swore her to secrecy. Well, she ended up telling her husband what I told her. Then he told my husband. We had a a (laughs) get-together recently, and my husband announced to me in front of our good friends that I wasn't so hot in the bedroom either. My Uh-oh. girlfriend was smirking and I and thought it was funny. My husband later ended up laughing it off, but I can't move past this. Should I end my friendship with her over this or learn how to take a joke? What? Uh, what? Well, Tommy? first of all, <laughs> I think the lesson to be learned here is you running your mouth about Shut your mouth. marriage to people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's the lesson you need to learn. Shut it ain't no mouth. can I take a joke. I mean, now I'm going to tell you right now, egotistically, that's crushing for a guy. Yes. Yes, Yes, it is. That's horrible. That's crushing. And especially the way it was delivered. Delivered, Oh, God. That was foul. Yeah. 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 She's not a friend. (laughs) She's not a friend. That was foul, but she's sitting over there smirking. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, she's not a friend. I wish I would hear somebody talking about my self menace. My self menace is cold. I wish the hell somebody (laughs) would. Be strong with it, boy. <laughs> you better stunt. <laughs> be it's better than no minutes. Yeah. <laughs> better not be talking Bobby about Collins. myself, minutes, boy. <laughs> All right, Steve. Here we go. Steve More. Said be strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be strong <laughs> with it, dog. <laughs> hey, seven minutes is seven minutes. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go, uh, CLO. Maurice in Philly. Philly, Philly, Philly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Philadelphia. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it says, I'm, a, I'm 47 years old and my girlfriend is 39. We're compatible in a lot of ways, but not in the bedroom. The sex no. is so bad because she gives me a time limit. Uh-oh. <laughs> when, <Fun. she's, laughs> when she's done, she rushes me to the finish line. She'll joke that I'm doing too much and need to stay focused so the sex can be over. This is not good for me, and I like to savor every moment of the experience. How can I get her to hush up and let me finish? <laughs> uh, Come on, CLO. Well, no. Come on, Glo. <laughs> See that hair up. That, that's, that, that, hair, what you doing? Hurry up. You good? You good? You good? Come on now. Come on. You need to hurry up. We got it. See, I, 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 I feel you, dog. Um, are they, they, are they, they're not married, are they? No, no girlfriend. 47 year old man, 39 year old girlfriend. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think what you're going to have to do seriously, dog, is sit her down and talk to her about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's a great idea. I think mm -hmm. so. I think. Now, that's the solid advice. Now, the joke is, mm -hmm. there's some people that want more time out there. <laughs> more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. Oh. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Well, coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have more trending national news. Joe Biden makes his first appearance as president-elect. And in entertainment news, we're all heartbroken about this. Um, Alex Trebek has passed, um, Man, the host yeah. of Jeopardy, for so many, many years. Man. We'll, t Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is Monday, and it's time to have a little fun here with some church complaints, Reverend <laughs> Motown and Deacon Def Jam. <laughs> We, we are of the we? most gregariousness uh -uh. today. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, we right. are rejoicing Word. and replenishing mm -hmm. the coffers of joy mm -hmm. by the immaculation, <laughs> come on now, Ooh. of the uh, Amen. principles <laughs> of oh. participation. One way Ooh, <laughs> That's almost like rain, but not quite. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go ahead, uh -oh. Deacon, with your complaints. Yeah. And church uh, complaints. Let's get down to it, Pastor. Uh, <clears throat> Sister Virginia Parker, she does not know what's going on as of right now. She said the election map and the coronavirus map look like the same thing. She want to know exactly what has taken place because she don't know. Well, what has taken place is ding dong, the witch is dead. Come by January, you're going to have to pack up. <laughs> I strongly suggest you start the moving process now instead of waiting on the last weekend because there ain't going to be a lot of people willing to help his ass move. He got to get out. So don't yeah. worry about that map right there. And quit looking at just look at the fact that we have a new president. Don't worry That's about right. that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, and speaking of moving, Pastor, the uh, the U-Haul Ministry across the country are all meeting in D.C. in January. Uh, <laughs> our two members, uh, Danny and Larry, will be driving the U-Haul from the jackpot joint of Jerusalem. They need a little <laughs> money, but they're going down there to the White House. It will be about 42 U-Hauls out front. So, uh... They want to uh, ask the church, can we support them in gas money? That's the U-Haul ministry. Well, that's very good. My favorite prayer mm -hmm. is that we don't require U-Hauls. Mm. I want him to entrench himself so deeply in that White House that we have to send in the National Guard and oh. drag his oh. ass out. It's he what I'm hoping it. for. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he would do it. Uh, Hunker down, Mr. President. <laughs> Hunker <Amen. up> down. <laughs> I love it. Lock yes. up. Don't give up. Hang on to the last minute, like you said. Mm. Make us have to come in there and get you. That's what we want to do. Amen. Yes, Amen. Want to do. yes Amen sir. Again. Uh, Pastor, all of our AKA members are trying to go to the inauguration in January, but they say uh, all the hotels are booked up and 
Now they want the church to rent them one of them Airbnb uh, houses uh, so they can all go. We got 13 AKAs in the congregation, Pastor. It's up to you if you want Well, that's a beautiful uh, thing, but we've already contacted the AKAs at Howard, which mm-hmm. is her alumni association. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, and they've uh-huh. all agreed that all the AKAs from anywhere can stay at the AKA house at Howard. <laughs> <laughs> now, the bathroom lines is going to be tumultuous. Pink and green everywhere. You are welcome. And pearls. <laughs> and uh, the brothers of Omega Psi Phi have volunteered to stand there and hold your purse while you in line for the bathroom. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Uh, this is unfortunate right here, Pastor. Pastor uh, Daryl Scott in Cleveland, who supported Donald Trump, is asking our church to come visit his church to help him get some of his members back. That's your call if you want to go down there. Oh, yeah, we've, uh, we're have we sending a busload from the jackpot joint up there to Reverend Scott's <laughs> church in Cleveland. Really? Uh, well, but it won't nice. be uh-huh. for gaining membership. We're okay. coming up there to whoop your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor. So we coming up there for no cussing. Cuss. No, 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 no. There is no cussing. A Z Z A's. Oh, oh. He's okay. whooping his A's. Amen. Oh, you worried about the cussing? Amen. I thought yeah. you were about yeah, the Don't worry about that. Oh, uh-huh. we not trying. Oh, oh, it's oh, gonna uh-huh. be violent. <laughs> oh, how oh. need they ass whoop anyway for going red? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, this is a different matter here. The cowboy fans are in mourning. They want uh. We you to talk to some of the members and quit teasing them about uh, losing their game yesterday. I think the members are Wait a minute. pretty the hard. The Cowboy lost yesterday? Yes, Pastor, they did. They, they had a substantial them? win when I looked at it. They had a uh, substantial lead. They was winning 14 to 3, I think it was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Whoa, Big, ben, Big Ben went to work. I mean, they, they lost. It was but confusing they, they, to me, uh, Deacon, to be honest with you, because... I've hated Pittsburgh my entire life because they're in the same division as the Browns. But I've hated the Dallas Cowboys even longer because before there was an AFL, NFL, the North Division was Cleveland Browns and Dallas Cowboys were in the same Mm -hmm. division. Mm -hmm. I'm old enough. Y'all don't remember that, but I do. So I've hated the Cowboys. (laughs) Long, Landry, Starback, Meredith. Yeah, Mama. My hatred for them has been severe, so I was really wanting Dallas to put out a victory, but uh, they didn't, and so I'm laughing either way. 24 yeah. 19. Oh, that was your be. point. That was your <laughs> point. <laughs> All right. I'm All not right. here to heal the Dallas uh, fans. I'm from That's Cleveland. Cold. I don't even know how to heal. Hell, watch me. <laughs> uh, Pastor, the senior choir has been rehearsing the 12 days of Christmas and would like to know if they can perform that next Sunday uh, with your permission. Now, the plan is they gonna, uh, they'd like to sing the first six days uh, next Sunday. Then the following Sunday, they'll send, uh, sing the other six days. That's up to you. No, <clears throat> the answer to that is an unequivocal no, because every year when they sing the 12 days of Christmas, they lose their place. Now, two years ago, we were stuck on the seventh day of Christmas, and they never, and then when they <laughs> finished it, they go right back. And the seventh day of Christmas, my, and I was going, I'll be damned. We got to move this long now. And then at the table, and the God. seventh day of Christmas, and we just kept saying the seventh day. And I always wanted to get to the fifth day, at least get the five golden rays. Never heard that. <laughs> One more time, Pastor. Five golden <laughs> rings. <laughs> four so calling birds, three French hens, two <laughs> turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> Never heard it. Never. <laughs> All right. Entertainment news. So right damn after sick this. of them people. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Joe Biden was elected president of the United States on Saturday, beating Donald Trump in a hotly contested election by getting 273 votes from the Electoral College after Pennsylvania was called in his favor that evening. 
Uh, Vice President-elect Senator Kamala Harris took to the stage to address the American people from Wilmington, Delaware, before President-elect uh, Joe Biden, and she talked about how um, she paid tribute to her mother who emigrated to the U.S. from India, and she honored black women. Take a listen. And so I am thinking about her and about the generations of women, black women, Latina, Native American women who throughout our nation's history have paved the way for this moment tonight. Women who fought and sacrificed so much for equality and liberty and justice for all, including the black women who are often too often overlooked but so often prove they are the backbone of our democracy. All right, yes, ma'am. I yes, love ma'am. that speech. I, I would also like speech. to, yes. uh, on a lesser note, yes. send out kudos to Kamala Harris's stylist for the <laughs> oh, hard God. pimp winter <laughs> white <laughs> pants suit. Came out there crushing the game. Mm-hmm. She Just turned please. the corner. I said, oh, Lord, she fly. <laughs> fly, baby. Uh, <laughs> President-elect uh, Joe Biden says he will seek unity during his victory speech. Take a listen. I pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide, but unify. Who, who doesn't see red states and blue states, only sees the United States. And work with all my heart, with the confidence of the whole people, to win the confidence of all of you. And for that is what America, I believe, is about. It's about people. And that's what our administration will be all about. I sought this office to restore the soul of America, to rebuild the backbone of this nation, the middle class, and to make America respected around the world again. Wow. Nice. Right. Wow. And, and they've already gotten to work, Steve. They've already gotten to work. His first order of business from President-elect Joe Biden will be uh, to announce his COVID-19 task force. They're trying to control and end this pandemic. They really I are. bet he talking They're to Dr. Fauci. It. I bet oh. you that. I bet you he talking to him. He is, yeah, a whole new task force. So congratulations. Yeah. Uh, on that, we look forward to it. Yeah, you know, it does. It doesn't make any sense what the Republicans are doing. You know, I was watching Fox, mm-hmm. and they are so against this election. They've bitten into the. They're drinking the uh, president's Kool Aid, because Donald Trump has hijacked the Republican Party. It's no longer party of morality. They go along with whatever he says. He says it's an unfair election. They jump right in line. He mm-hmm. says they stole the election from him. Do you know how many of these people are jumping in line with him? It doesn't make any damn sense. They know good and hell well what happened. But do we have a minute here, though? Uh, Go ahead, Steve. Yes. Okay. Can I share something with you? Of course you can. Mitch McConnell was on Fox. Not Mitch McConnell. Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. Yes. Lindsey Graham was on Fox. I get them mixed up sometimes. You know, they both (laughs) hate them. Same thing. And, um... (laughs) And, and they were on there talking. He was on there talking about, I cannot believe that Joe Biden got more votes than Barack Obama in certain areas. Now, what he meant was he couldn't believe that he got more black people to vote for him than Barack Obama got to vote for him. Here's what they don't know about us. First of all, more of us are registered now than was registered when Barack Obama ran. Mm -hmm. And you gave us another reason to vote. See, black people, what? I was going to add to that, Steve. A lot of black people didn't vote when Barack Obama ran because they didn't think he was going to win. They Mm -hmm. thought they didn't think he would win. He could win. So they Mm -hmm. stayed home. A lot of them did. And also, here's what I came up with. See, when Barack Obama ran, 
we 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 were taking care of some business for history and stuff like that. But something happened in this election that was different. See, here's what here's what Republicans and uh, and racists don't understand. Mm. Black people don't care if you don't do nothing for us. I really don't expect nobody to. Black people don't really care if you don't do nothing for us. But we do care about what you keep doing to us. See, Amen. that's what this election was about. We voted because we sick of what you keep doing to us. Mm -hmm. Not for what we thought Biden was going to do for us. We voted because we sick of y'all doing to us. We're sick of the hatred, the divisiveness, mm -hmm. the systemic racism. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. We're oh, sick yes. of you killing us. Mm -hmm. We sick of you every time we tell you black lives matter. You got a long list of police lives matter, white lives matter. We not saying they don't. Right. All we are saying is we want our lives to matter just like everybody else's lives matter. But y'all keep flipping the script because of your hatred and hatefulness towards us. You can't understand what we're saying because you don't know what we're complaining about. But if all that was happening to us was happening to you, your ass would have been through with this. And that's why Donald Trump ain't the damn president no more. Because we <laughs> sick of his ass with all We're this phone monkey calls. mess. 877-29-Steve. Oh, okay. Call us. 877-29-Steve. Right after this. Break. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, let's go to the phones and talk to the people. President-elect Joe Biden and Madam Vice President-elect Kamala Harris uh, people are just celebrating all over the country. Let's go to the phones. Line one, eight seven seven twenty nine. Steve. Let's go to line one and talk to Mia out of Atlanta. Mia. 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 Hello. Okay. Oh, Mia. Mia. We lost Mia. Oh, it seems like we lost Mia. Let's go to line two and talk to Chris out of South Carolina. Steve. I'm looking for Chris out of South Carolina. Oh, Chris. Okay. Oh, Chris. Maybe they're I'm celebrating a little Mia. too hard. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let's go to line three and talk. Okay. No, okay. we no, don't no. hear Chris. Okay, we got. There All right, we got Chris. Chris. There's Chris. Chris, Steve Harvey. Good, good. How you doing, man? Yeah. Hey, Chris, yes, well, let me wow. say something. I want to say thank you to South Carolina because mm -hmm. if it wasn't for you all and uh, Claiborne, because see, Clyburn. Clyburn, uh -huh. Clyburn. Clyburn. Clyburn turned this whole thing around. Clyburn, who is a member of Almighty. Uh -huh. He is. Omega <laughs> sci-fi. Uh, he turned this whole election around mm -hmm. because Joe Biden's uh, primary run was in trouble until it got to South Carolina and Clyburn and the good folks in South Carolina came to his aid. See, it yeah, wasn't no, see, hey, hey, let me see what I'm saying. See, it wasn't no election fraud then. Mm -hmm. right. Trump, right. You know, right. It's only right. electric flaw, election fraud where you lose it. Right. Ain't no fraud in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Ain't none Missouri, Florida, Alabama, Texas. Florida. Texas. Ain't uh -huh. none of that fraud. <laughs> Texas. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we was winning in Texas, though. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Houston yeah. and Dallas. Uh -huh. They tried. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, all right, Shirley, let's go. All right, let's go. Thank you, uh, Chris. Let's go to line three and talk to Joe out of Philly. Boy, hey, good morning. Good. How you doing? What's up, Joe, up in Philly? What's going on, man? Hey, how you doing, Mr. Harvey? Listen, right, yeah. um, I just want to express to y'all the fact that um, I listen to y'all every morning. And Thank on you. top of that is that um, the whole Philly thing, I'm going to give you an insight because it's a lot deeper and what the news is showing and things like that, it, it was literally corner boys and, and OGs who were in line at, wow. at the polls. I mean, mm. you had corner boys influencing and having conversations and indulging in conversations about this election. Um, actually, with like 
drunks and winos and you know mm-hmm. crack addicts. And but these we lost. Him. Oh, we lost him. Wow. Oh. No, but what he oh, was man. doing was real. Yeah. See, that's why he's not in the White House because the African American turnout was. It's, strippers did a video for voting. When you Come ever on. seen that? I know. Uh, you, you don't even understand because we got sick of what y'all what you was doing to us. That's more why your ass ain't in the White House no more. Eight seven seven twenty nine Steve. After this, call us. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve Harvey Morning Show. We are talking to the people this morning on this historic Monday. Let's go to the phones. 877-29-STEVE. Let's go to line four and talk to Mark out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Hey, Mark. Hey, how you doing, Steve? Good. What's going on, brother? What's on your mind, man? Hey, man, I just wanted to uh, call you and just uh, tell you that uh, you are very inspirational, brother, and I appreciate you. And, uh, I ain't gonna uh, be too long, but uh, I was uh, on. I didn't have a father in my life. I did, and I got uh, three kids: two boys and a six-year-old. My uh, boys are seventeen and sixteen. And you know, I, I be watching you on YouTube and a lot of shows, and I take you a lot of advice on how to raise the, how to raise them, and uh, teach them how to be a man. And I just want to tell you that, man, I appreciate you. Um, I love you from the bottom of my heart, and I'll just keep doing what you're doing. Mm. Oh, well, I appreciate that, man. Nice. Thank you so much. A lot of what you hear me saying on the radio and stuff like that is because I have some really, really smart people around me that keep me focused, that keep me uh, in line, <laughs> on track. Uh, it's mostly uh, Shirley and Carla. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Carla. That voice you heard sorry, in the back that me <laughs> almost Tommy threw up in the back of my throat a little bit. Go ahead, Shirley, with the next call. All right, thank you, Mark. <laughs> Line five, let's go to Jeffrey out of Temple Hills, Maryland. <laughs> hey, Jeffrey. Hey, hey Mr. Harvey, to Shirley, to Carla, to Nephew Tommy. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, like the gentleman just got you saying, Mr. Harvey, man, you have been a great, great inspiration. Two things that I really want to bring to your attention. I know we've been celebrating. We're so ecstatic about the election and all, but we got to encourage our people. They want to be around to see the inauguration. They need to mask up. They Mm -hmm. need to really be careful and mask up. Then number two, Mr. Harvey, what advice, because you got so many supporters that do listen to you, follow your instruction. What do we do now? We got the election. We have what we wanted. Now what happens, sir? That's- well, the most important thing we next got to do with this piece of business is in the state of Georgia because we have to get these two senators, Warnick and Okostoff, or whatever his name is. Ossoff, John Ossoff okay, okay, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Raphael Warnock. Warnock. Okay, well, <laughs> we, we, we'll get the names right, but I don't know what his name is. But got it. we got to get these two people elected to the Senate so we can have a tie in the Senate. The tiebreaker becomes the vice president who is Tom you Lex. know who so that's the most important thing we have to do but now that we celebrate it we have to now get down to the business of the continuation of registering our people of keep talking about our people now about the importance of the other elections see now that we see that our vote can change things that our vote mm. can be a deciding mm-hmm. factor. Right. That our vote is the reason why. I kept telling y'all, we can show them that since you don't believe our lives matter, I bet when we show you our votes matter, I bet you would think our lives matter. They all know it now. Come Lindsey now. Graham, racist ass, was on TV with his rhetoric on Saturday night. I couldn't believe this guy, but then again, I could because I'm 63, and I've been around a long time. See, man, can I share something with you? Sure. I'm from Welch, West Virginia. I know what colored only water fountains look like. I couldn't read the signs as a little boy that good, but I, I, I've been there. I, I've been there. You can't eat at this lunch counter. You got to go around to the back. I've been there. I've been there, man. 
So mm. to see what we've come through and what we've done is amazing to me. But we have some unfinished business in that. We got to get into all these smaller elections, these mayoral races, these Local. governable races, mm-hmm. these Senate races. Sure. We got to get involved who these judges and sheriffs is going to be mm-hmm. because we have the power. power and we're going to yeah. show them that this was not a fluke what happened in Georgia. We are going to the re-election of these two candidates that's in the runoff for the Senate, and we're going to show them it wasn't a fluke. They don't that's believe right. fat meat greasy. All right. Uh, thank you, Steve. Coming up next, <clears throat> Tommy's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> All right. Oh. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, I told him not to go to her funeral. We'll get into Mm. that uh, a little later on. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for his nephew? What you got? In the building. All right, morning crew. Can I go rogue real quick with today's prank phone call? That's that all new 2021 Nissan Rogue is built for adventure with five different drive modes. They can take you anywhere just like my prank phone call. Come on, Uncle Steve. Let's go rogue. Today's (laughs) prank phone call is your wife in the limo. Yo, Willie, oh, in the limo. When I rode, that's how I rode. Yeah, From you really are going rogue. That's how I rode. Your Go wife rogue. in the limo. <laughs> Come on, Gary. Yeah. Hello, hello. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to read Rob, Rob, Robert, yeah, Rob. Yeah, what's happening? This, this Robert. What's up, boss? Hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, listen, man. Uh, my name's Phil, dog. I know you threw some other people. Your brother's. Right. Yeah, that's my brother. Yeah, what's happening? Listen, man, I'm calling you because there's something going hold on. on hold right? on, hold on. First of all, it, 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 everything all right with my brother, right? You ain't this ain't no he ain't no trouble, is it? No, 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 no. Okay. Straight, man. Listen, though, you married to right? Yeah, that's my wife, boss. Okay. Well, see, man, what I'm trying okay, to look, 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 man. Um, I mean, spit it out. What's happening, boss? Listen, what I'm trying to explain to you. My, once again, my name for you. Okay. Part time, I drive limos, and uh, I'm actually driving right now. Okay. But, okay. What's up? Well, I had seen your wife. You know, I knew you was <laughs> little brother. You know, I was like, okay, this this right here ain't cool. Hold on, bro. You know, what, what? You you seen my wife? What you mean, my wife? How you know? What are you talking about? Okay. Well, let me, okay. Okay, Rob. Let me ask you: Is, is your wife there right now? No, nah, boss. My wife been gone, man. She was out with her sister and her homegirls, man. They been gone. Where you trying to get at, man? What's my okay, brother? Okay, bro, listen, okay, bro. Listen, okay. I got. Hey, hey. Man. I understand. Just listen to me, man. Listen. Hey, man. I done been dogged out a many times by some ladies. You know what I'm saying? I just hate to see brothers get done wrong. I don't done like wrong. that. Where are you coming from, dog? Listen, dog. You need to go ahead and just spit out all this rambling. And Okay, okay, it's, listen, it's, man. It's, it's, I, I need I, to get I the drive. Point, what, I drive. I drive limousine. And what I'm trying to say to you is... is what you trying to say, man? Spit it off. Your, your wife is in the back of the limousine I'm driving right now. She in the back of so what? What, the girls out and, and like that? Oh, what? Oh, no, no, man. If it was a bunch of girls out, I wouldn't even be calling you, bro. Your wife is in the back of this limousine with a man. What the f***, man? What the f***? Man, this oh my okay. God. Hey, Junior, y'all, hey, y'all step out. Hey, y'all step out of the room for a minute, man. Step out of the room for a minute. Step out of the room. Just, hold on. Hold on, boss. Step out of the room for a minute, man. Step out of the room. Hello? Uh, Damn, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, look, man. You need to come correct, man, because this ain't no matter right here, dog. You saying that my wife, you you got my, my wife in the back of the limousine you driving. Man. What she got on, dog? What she got on? What color it is that she got on? A black dress with white lines in it. What That's the f***? What, where you at, man? Is is there? You I'm, I'm trying to... Hey, 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 bro. I'm trying to make sure I got the right person. Okay, look, look, look. Is that what she had on? You know my brother. You ain't got that accomplished. And you saying that you got my wife wearing what she is out the house with talking about does this look cute, f***? Does look... I wasn't studying this look cute, f***. And you say he in the back of your car, where you driving at, dog? Where you driving at, man? That's all I need to know, about. You you need to have that. Who the hell is? Who the 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 who
You know what I'm Look, saying? Look, dog, I just tell me this, man. Brother, reach out to you, it's, man. It's, 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 it's the bro that's sitting in the back. Do she got the curls coming down on the side? That's all I need to know. Do she got the curls just dangling on the side? Yeah. I ain't hear you, boss. I ain't hear you. Speak up, man. I, I said, yeah, man. I can't talk loud, man. They in the back. I can't hey, look, talk. look, all this shit, man. You calling me, dog? And this some serious. Shit. You you gonna call and you you trying to make it straight, right? So you bring it all over to where I'm at, boss. Dog, I can't do that, man. I can't bring all this. You can't do that, dog. You gonna hey, you gonna act crazy, bro? You gonna act crazy, man? I'm trying to. What the f you lady? Look, dog. You call me. Put it on the phone. That. Put on the phone. I can't. Get a phone to her, dog. Get a phone. A baby. You need to drive that where I'm at, boss. Drive that where I'm at, boss. Because this is gonna be hammered right now. I just got. It's another year. I say I'm gonna go back to my old. Man, I can't hear you, dog. You, you listen, listen. All this whispering, this shit, you either need to stop this car and say you need to or some shit. stand outside the car and tell me where the hell the you at. I can come meet you wherever the hell you at, dog. Or you need to bust that around and tell her that you gotta take a detour or some shit, dog, cause this shit is real. Okay, hey, dog, you gotta calm down, man. Oh, dog, 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 you don't even know me, man. You ain't mess with the wrong. Shit. So listen, boss. Here's the thing, boss. Look, I'm either going to find out what little thing you serve the rest of the you drive, and I'm going to find your or you're going to have to come find me, dog. You're going to mess with the wrong one. Put on the phone, boss. Put on the phone. Hey, 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 dog. Hey, put on the phone, man. I ain't got time to be... Hey, look, 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 look. Hey, you help me out. Appreciate the call, man. Put on the phone, man. Wait, 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 What's up, man? Okay, listen. Man, you think this is a game. Man, I'm finna come find. Hey, dog. Okay, do you want... I'm gonna give you the address on what it is. We don't have to bounce, dog. We don't have to bounce. We don't have to bounce. We don't have to bounce. Hey, hey, listen. Hey, man. So... All I know is they they gonna stop at the hotel for a minute, man. It's change clothes. Hotel? What the No, this... No, this... This player... Hey, look. Hey, where you at right now, dog? You in... I'm on my way. I'm on my... Wait, what hotel, dog? Oh, come on, what man. Don't, don't act what like that. Dog, where she at? Where she at? Where she at? Dog, dog, don't act like that, man. Hey, look, you got one more time to be trying to tell me how to act. Okay, okay, I'm finna tell you, man, but listen to me. I want to tell you one more thing. Man, what the f***? I ain't got time for no more one more thing. The one more thing you need to be telling me is where you at, dog? Where you at, man? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your wife. Hell no. Hey, man. Who? Who? Man. What the? Nephew Tommy. Dog. Nephew Tommy. <laughs> this is Nephew Tommy in the flesh, baby. Oh, man, am I on the radio? Man. Yeah, my bad, brother cousin, dog. My bad, man. You got me, man. You got me, man. Golly. Hey, let me ask you something, oh, man. man. Before we go, Rob, what is, man, the baddest radio show? Oh, in the man, the Steve and <laughs> Harley Morning Show with Nephew Tommy is crazy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Too much. I love him. <laughs> that was serious. Damn, right man. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing you can tell me, Seth. Where you at, dog? Uh-huh. You playing with the wrong one. Boss, you got one more time yeah, to tell me how to act. <laughs> dog, you Hold got on, one boss. more Hold time on, to yeah. tell me how to act. Yeah. Put those people out of the room so he can hear oh. what you had to say. Oh, I loved him. Too. Oh, man. Hey, man. Call it. That oh. was my favorite laugh, too. <laughs> You got one more, one more time. Tell me how to act. Tell me how to act. You don't even want to tell me that. I'm going to go back me. to my old ways. <laughs> you don't even know. I'm trying to. You don't even know. Oh, Tommy, you the man. king, they, boy. They, they kissing, man. Watering. They kissing, dog. <laughs> I said, man. I don't mess with people's wives and their kids, and you do Bro, it all I just the time. Need to know where you at. You need to know where you at. You don't oh, tell me Lord. where you at. Either, either you going to come find me or I'm going to come find you. It's one of the two. One of the where two. Where you at, baby? <laughs> and where I'm going to be at? Uptown Comedy Corner, baby. This weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I got two Friday, two Saturday. One on Sunday. Tickets on sale right now. That nephew, that ignorance, that crazy nephew, Tommy, and friends. This weekend, you do not want to miss stupidity at its best. That's Friday, two shows. Saturday, two shows. And one show on Sunday. That Sunday show? Ha, <laughs> ha, Yeah, that's, the, that's for the grown and sexy. That's the 5 o'clock show. All right? Yeah. Doors open at 4. The nephew in the ATL.
best time Georgia. to go to Georgia, right? Best time to go to Georgia right after the election like this. This is the best yeah. time to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm. There you have it. George, have fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, have fun. Have a good time. While out. Yeah, we got a new president. While out. <laughs> <laughs> it feels I, good, doesn't it? Don't, <laughs> I don't care how they count. I don't care how they feel. Then let's do the recount and get your ass out. Hello. Yes. Yes. Man, ain't nobody <laughs> To the cheated. left. To the left. To the left. All right. Coming up, Strawberry Letter. I told him not to go to her funeral right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, today's Strawberry Letter is brought to you by the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. That's right. Rogue! It it is built for families, and it's ready for all types of Rogue adventures with five different drive modes. I love it. It's so versatile, you can go almost anywhere. Now let's go rogue with today's strawberry letter. You know that's going to be rogue. You know that's going to be rogue. (laughs) If you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com and click submit strawberry letter. That's right. Here we go. This one right here. You could be reading. We could be reading your letter live on the air, and you could be hearing it like we're going to do this one right here, right now. All right, rogue people, buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Subject, I told him not to go to her funeral. Dear Stephen Shirley, I have been married for 25 years, and my soulmate, and uh, to my soulmate, and we have a great life. Until three years ago when I caught him cheating, one night when he was supposedly hanging out with his boys, he called me and said he was too drunk to drive home. I offered to go get him, but he said he was going to sleep it off and come home soon. I called to check on him at 6 a.m., and a woman answered the phone. She told me he was passed out at her house, and they'd been dating for three months, and he told her he was getting a divorce. I used the GPS locator on his phone, and I drove to her house, and I did a Jasmine Sullivan on his car and bust out all of his windows, okay? Uh, He admitted to the affair, and within a month's time, he had moved into his own apartment because he said I was a ticking time bomb. After he moved, he started trying to win me back and was begging to come home. But he didn't know that his girlfriend was posting pictures inside his house, in his bed, and in his car just so I'd see them. This went on for about a year, and then she called me and said he was trifling and I could have him back. He came home and we went to counseling and I hoped everything would be fine. Recently, I saw on social media that his ex-mistress died suddenly and he left a comment under her post. I mentioned it to him and he was almost in tears. He said he should go to her funeral and pay his respects. I told him he should not go and I would be upset if he did. A day after this woman's funeral, I found out that my husband not only went to her funeral, he was a pallbearer. What is wrong with him? Should I be upset or not? Should you be upset or not? (laughs) Is that really a question? Of course you should be upset, mad, enraged, angry, all of the above. Uh, You have every right to be mad. What he did is totally disrespectful to you. It's disrespectful to the marriage. Uh, Who cares that they were in an entanglement, we'll call it, okay? That doesn't mean he had to show up at her funeral 25 years with him should mean something. And going to the funeral of his mistress is one thing. Uh, He shouldn't have done that. But a pallbearer? Really, though? I I mean, come on, man. Uh, What a a slap in the face to you uh, after you found out because he didn't have the guts to tell you beforehand. And, And here's the thing. You asked him not to go, and he went anyway. I I just, you know, this man does what suits him, obviously, uh, with no regard for you, his wife of 25 years. You already took him back for cheating on you with her when she was alive. Now she's dead and she still got your man acting crazy from the grave, no less. I, you know, you, you need to decide what you're going to do before he gets home from the funeral and and all of that, okay? Because it's obvious he doesn't care about you, and he's not ever going to act right. Uh, He's calling you a ticking time bomb? Yeah, I would definitely be a ticking time bomb. Steve? Well, 
There's so many I levels know, to this letter. It's crazy. Oh. All of them. It's rogue. <laughs> Woo. Good Lord. Uh, let me see where I can start with this letter. Mm. Uh, I'm not on Zoom anymore. I disappeared. I uh, see you just fine. <laughs> okay, well, I don't. Anyway, I'm getting some technical help. Anyway, let's just move on. Okay. Here's what's wrong with this letter. Uh, I, this, this soulmate thing. <laughs> 25 years, your soulmate. Until three years ago, I caught him cheating. Now, he was supposed to be with his boys. He called you and told you he was too drunk to come home. Mm-hmm. Then you said, well, you'd come to get him. He said, no, nah, I'm going to just sleep it off over here. Click, hang up. So then you, being suspicious, you called him to check on him at 6 a.m., and a woman answered the phone. <clears throat> Excuse me, dog. He he don't even know what a, wo- a woman answered his phone. She told me he was passed out at her house. They've been dating for three months, and he told her he was getting a divorce. <clears throat> Next problem. I used the GPS locator on his phone. Okay, how do? Let me ask y'all this question: How do you get this off your phone? Because I what? think that's a major concern in this whole letter from a lot of men that's hearing this letter. <laughs> I used the GPS locator on his phone, and I drove to her house. Wait a minute. How do you get this off of your phone? (laughs) This is new news to me. This is not about you. I'm stunned. I What? How did I get this off the damn phone for me and I did? I beat damn. I can't stand these new phones. I'm going back to flip phone, flip flip phones. Cause <laughs> see, you didn't have all this back then. They That's too what smart. The average dude yeah, on. she got it, and we're not telling. She that came and did a Jasmine Sullivan on his car. I busted him. Busted out. out all the windows. <laughs> then he admitted to the fact, and he moved into his own because he said I was a ticking time bomb. You damn right. right you a ticking time bomb. We'll have part two of Steve's out. response coming up in 23 minutes after the hour. Tell them not to go to her funeral. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter subject. I told him not to go to her funeral. Well, we got a bunch of stuff in this letter, but let me recap <laughs> it. 25 years of being with her soulmate. Then three years ago, she caught him cheating. He called him one night and said he was too drunk to drive home. He was over some friend's house. He was going to just stay over there and sleep it off. You offered to go pick him up. He said, no, I got it. Then at 6 a.m., you called to check on him. Woman answered the phone and said that he passed out at her house. They've been dating for three months. He told her he was getting a divorce. And then you used a GPS locator on his phone and drove to her house and broke all the windows out on the car. Now, the thing that we've learned in this sentence right here is how do we get the GPS off our phones? That's what the most men is looking at this. I didn't know that. This is not about you. You know, at least I ain't up to nothing. You can GPS me all damn day, but there's brothers out there that need this information. How do you get this damn GPS off your phone? I need you to and move on. Now, he didn't go up there and busted all the windows out the car. Then he admitted that he had the affair after mm-hmm. about a month. Mm-hmm. But after about a month, he moved uh, out to get his own apartment because he said I was a ticking time, but ticking time bomb. And he was right about that. Mm-hmm. Yes, you a ticking time bomb. You know he can't stay there with you. He oh, wake geez. up. He wake up in the bed. You laying on your pillow just staring at him. He got to get the hell out of here. He already know what this is right here. TikTok, baby. You in the kitchen. All you doing is chopping up carrots real hard. He, he got to get out of here. He see this here. 
You down at the Walmart, you done bought extra large black hefty bags and some bleach. He got to get his ass out of here. <laughs> what? She done bought extra large black hefty bags and some bleach. He got to get the hell out of here and get his own apartment. It's because the, the time bomb is ticking. Now, after he moved, he started trying to win her back by begging to come home. What he didn't know was his girlfriend was posting pictures inside his apartment, in his bed, and in his car, just so I'd see him. This went on for about a year. Then the girl called the woman that wrote this letter and said he was trifling and I could have him back. Wow. <laughs> She knew. What, she knew what she did died. he do? <laughs> yeah. What did he do to be could call trifling after a year? Was it somebody else? No, he just he just ain't he ain't doing nothing he said he was gonna do. So she told him you could have him back. He came home, y'all went to counseling. You hoped everything would be fine. Now here's where the letter get ugly. Recently, I saw on social media that his ex-mistress died suddenly and he left a comment under the post and I mentioned to him and he was almost in tears. Now, lady, listen to me. I know you writing a letter and I know you emotional and I know you felt this was a good thing to let us in on. You found out that his ex-mistress had died suddenly. I don't know why you would put yourself in this woman's death like this uh-huh. and implement yourself what? into what could be a possible huh? unsolved mystery. Because really? a minute ago, she just died. All of a sudden, you know she died suddenly. Ain't nothing in there. Ain't nothing on social media says she died suddenly. I don't know why you would put your ass in this damn middle of this investigation and you wasn't, they hadn't even thought of your ass. Now, you'd have just Harvey. implicated yourself in an unsolved, they going to dig her ass up now and go do another autopsy, and your ass is going to prison. All you had to do was shut your damn mouth. But this is, let this be a lesson to all women, because sometimes you talk too lesson? damn much. You so mad and hateful, you to say them. She all of a sudden, his ex letter. mistress died suddenly. <laughs> you don't know if she had cancer. You don't know if this woman God, had, you know, something COVID? else going on, COVID? a tumor. You don't know if COVID hit. She died suddenly. You have just implicated yourself in this woman's death with your dumb ass. <laughs> she is so Mystery solved. Thank you, Steve now, Harvey. Then he come out. He then his dumb ass said he should go to her funeral and pay his respect. Oh. What? <laughs> I told him he shouldn't go and you'd be upset at after the woman's funeral found out your husband not only went to the funeral, he was a Paul brother. He done Ooh. drug her ass to the grave. <laughs> he done screwed the woman, slept with the woman, you killed her, and now he done drug her ass to the grave. He the Paul bear. This letter's too much. I don't know what no, to do with You're this. too much, sir. This is too much. <laughs> do you Can't have more? She implicated herself. If you want me to have more, I will. Yes. Yes. All right. More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and more of this letter right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. uh, (laughs) We're back. Uh, We're we're doing part three today of today's Strawberry Letter. The subject was, I told him not to go to her funeral. It was from a wife, Steve, who had been married for 25 years. Uh, Come to find out her husband was cheating on her with a woman who died suddenly. And uh, (laughs) you can take it from there because you uncovered some, some, in your investigation, some news that I hadn't even thought of. See, I read these letters differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, now after they got past it and they was trying to go through counseling and everything, Uh he had tried to come back home. Mm -hmm. You know, you hope. That everything's going to be fine. They working right. through it. Then the woman said in the letter, I saw on social media that his ex-mistress died suddenly and he left a comment under the post. Uh. I mentioned it to him and he was almost in tears. 
Wait a minute. My question was well, soon as I saw this is why I just don't know why this woman mm-hmm. would put herself and implicate herself in this woman's death. <laughs> because say she, you say that. You she say that said, one. I mm-hmm. saw on social media that his ex mistress died suddenly. Mm-hmm. Nobody said nothing about her dying suddenly. <laughs> you don't know this woman's medical history. You don't know what she had. Oh, you don't know oh, if this woman okay. had cancer or tumor. You don't the know dude, if she had uh, milionanophysis. Uh-huh. You don't know what she what? had. What you know, could have woman? anything. You know, stuff you see on TV. You <laughs> had too much asbestos in your apartment, and you got uh, 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 milionanophysis. Uh, uh, melanoma. <laughs> yeah, and you have no uh, milionanophysis or something oh, like that, oh, and you got to check out of here. You don't know what she'd have had. Been sitting oh. up in that apartment full of asbestos. You don't know nothing about this woman. For you to say she died suddenly, mm-hmm. I be damned. Nah. <laughs> then you mad at your husband because uh-huh. he said he should go to her funeral and pay his respects. You told him not to go and you'd be upset. He not only went to the funeral, you looked up and found some pictures. His ass was a power bearer. Now, <laughs> that right there. you <laughs> that implicated wild. yourself in the death, <laughs> and he done drug her ass to the graveyard. <laughs> now, so all y'all, what y'all need to do is stay married. Mm-hmm. Let me because give y'all, let on, listen to Uncle Steve now. Y'all two need to stay married and get y'all story together and stick to the alibi. <laughs> Y'all need a damn alibi. <laughs> She's not a suspect. What so they saying? got to stay together. They she have to. is now. Uh-huh. And they need to start working on this damn story. Because yeah. the FBI coming. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Steve. More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show You're coming welcome. up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, um, actress Eva Longoria, you know, she's Latina. Uh, Eva Longoria is facing backlash for her comments during an MSNBC interview saying that Latina women were the true heroines in Biden's historical win. Take a listen. The women of color showed up in big ways. Of course, you saw uh, in Georgia what uh, black women have done, but the Latina women were the real heroines here, beating men yeah. in turnout in every state and voting for Biden-Harris at an average rate close to three to one. And and that wasn't surprising to us. You know, Latinos are the CEOs of the households. They make all the financial decisions and healthcare decisions and educational decisions. Many Latinas are small business owners and they wanted a plan for recovery um, for themselves, not for Wall Street. And so Trump's policies were never aimed at the struggling Latina community. Uh, uh, mm. uh, 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 yeah, this was <laughs> this is a uh. tough one right here, because according to the preliminary exit poll data, 91 percent of black women, black women, black women voted for Joe Biden in comparison to 70 percent, 70 percent of Latina women. This is according to The New York Times. Well, Eva Longoria is facing backlash for her comment and uh, has released a statement saying after watching the interview, uh, she she watched it back. She she could see how comparing Latinas to black women, um, which I would never do, she says, I was comparing Latinas to their male counterparts, but my wording was not clear, and I regret that. Eva went on to say, black women have long been the backbone of the Democratic Party. Black women deserve a standing ovation for the work they have done year after year. Activist Tamika Mallory uh, posted on her social media page, she would still like to speak to Eva Longoria because black women and Latina women need to get on the same page. Now, speaking of black women, we want to shout out again our queens, Democratic leader Stacey Abrams, Atlanta mayor's Keisha Lance Bottom, top Biden's ad- ad- advisor, uh, top Biden advisor, Simone Sanders, and of course, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Now, I'm with Tamika Mallory on this one. Uh, I-, I think black women and Latina women should get together. I really Absolutely. do. That would be a strong Absolutely. block, a strong force right yeah. there. See, mm-hmm. I also think this ain't no what time Eva for. was trying to do she was. was what everybody was trying to do. Everybody wants to lay claim to a piece of the victory. 
Uh-huh. You know, everybody wants to carve out a victory. But, and, and because, look, I mean, we're doing it. And yeah. we're doing it we as do. we should do it. But the truth right. is the truth, right. yeah. Because uh-huh. I am very, very proud of the African-American turnout in this election. Okay. We are proud as a morning show because we were instrumental in that turnout mm-hmm. on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, man, and the proof is in the pudding because when you got right. down to the end in Milwaukee, mm-hmm. when you got down to the end in Detroit, you got down to the end in Atlanta, and you got down to the end in Philly, that's where we stay. I'm that's sorry, right. yeah. but that's yeah. us. Yeah. And so and so we get a big piece of credit for that. Now, let me say this, though. Mm-hmm. The reason for the astronomical turnout in this election mm-hmm. was because of COVID. There was no distractions. This was the first election in my lifetime where there were no distractions. Yeah. Everybody was home. Most people on lockdown. Most people wearing masks. People got to deal with it. A lot of people out of work. And COVID caused us to be able to focus. And that's what produced the largest turnout was because more people were sitting at home paying attention to it. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the turnout. Yeah. yeah. That's the truth yeah. of the matter. COVID yeah. caused this turnout. But I, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to save it for women. my uh, yeah. closing, for closing. Yeah. 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 What were you going to say, Carla? I was saying Latina and black women because we saw the issue in Florida. You know, we you know, we lost Florida. The Democrats did not win Florida. So a lot of people mm-hmm. are saying the we need to have this conversation within our we communities do. with between the two races to make yeah. sure. But now Latino we love Latino we love you her. have to break up Latino now. Absolutely. La- uh-huh. The Latino vote is different segments. Yeah. yeah it is. And it that's is. what yeah, we're not is. paying attention to. All right, we'll have right. more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at twenty minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, nephew. What you got? What you got? Come on here, girl. You know me. I'm always ready to go. What? Rogue. In the all new, versatile 2021 (laughs) Nissan Rogue. Rogue. Perfect for someone like me. I'm always on the go and it has five different drive modes that fit whatever kind of mood I'm in when I'm behind the wheel. So check out the 2021 Nissan Rogue. And while you do that, <laughs> while you do that, we going rogue with sports talk. Did anybody see that who that nation yesterday? <laughs> they spank, spank Tom Brady yesterday, 38 to 3. Oh, my God, the who that nation has awakened. But let me tell you this about sports. Uh, it's going down Sunday. The Texans will be in Cleveland. Playing oh, the Lord. Browns. Ooh, That's right. Up. Sunday up. is going <laughs> down. And I'm just going to put it out there. I got 250 on it. Nah. On the right. table. Anybody? Let's see, hold on. Challenge. Hold on. Challenge. Hold, on. Hold, on. <laughs> hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The last time, you know, I tried to get a bet from you, you didn't want to bet that. I had that nice and stacked. I don't want to bet your number. You remember, that? You remember, that? You you remember I, that? So, oh, yeah. you know, nah, 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 nah. Just hold on. You need to be in serious Hurry. prayer that the Texans win this game. Because if they don't, mm. you and little sick ass junior better not come to work. <laughs> We're taking your phone calls up next. 9 Steve. 877-29 Steve. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Steve Harvey Morning Show. Steve, let's go to the phones. 877-29 Steve. Let's go to line one and talk to Big Tony out of Philly. Big Tony out of Philly. This is Steve Harvey. What's up with you, man? Good morning, Steve. Good morning. What's up with you, brother? Yeah, uh, Donald Trump cannot say that he's in call and concede to the election because he won two states. He won the state of confusion and the state of denial. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Tony. Love Come it. on, big Tony. <laughs> you know, All that's right, what's go. crazy. He he doesn't get it. I don't care that they do the recount in Georgia. When you recount it, you're gonna get the same results. Watch. Mm-hmm. Watch. I don't win Phoenix. Go on over there and win Arizona. I don't care. You're <laughs> out. Come well, on, let's got go. Pennsylvania. All right. Yeah. All right. Line two, Melita out of Roanoke, Virginia. God bless you this morning. Yes, ma'am. God bless you too. 
Yeah, yeah, Hallelujah to the high is praise. Mm-hmm. I thank God for open that door that never been opened before. That our people, oh, hallelujah, thank you, got mm. out there and voted. Even to my son, kept on saying, Mama, he got it. You get a welcome at, in the morning, don't you, at church? Uh-huh. Yeah, she, do the, she do the announcements or something. Announcement, I, I can tell <laughs> Line yeah. three, we're moving on. Thank you, Melita, Sister Melita. Let's go to Valerie in Northtown, Pennsylvania, baby. Hey, Valerie in Pennsylvania. What's going on, Valerie? Oh, my God. I love you, Steve Harvey, but most of all, what I call for is to thank you guys for everything that you have did as far as this election is concerned, how you have walked us through this, and how you have kept all the lies and the ridicule and everything away from us. And I truly every day appreciate getting up early in the morning and listening to the Steve Harvey Nation and the things that you say at the end that just uplift us and keep us going. I appreciate you. And that you, Tommy, you are truly the bomb every morning. Every morning, I Thank appreciate you, you. And just keep it moving. I love you guys, Shirley and Carla Pharrell. I just love you guys. Thank you every day. Well, we love you, Thank too, you, baby. Valerie. You That's right. so Thank sweet, you, Valerie. Everything. That's love. That's Loyal. That is. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, quick seconds here. to uh, Line four, Rodney out of Gary. We don't have time. We have to take him when we come back. We yeah. only got a few seconds. Yeah. We'll get him when I, we come back. We Thank all our phone callers and everybody. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna try to take a couple more when we come back. Uh, it's just one of them, one of them times, man. Uh, and we got some more business to take care of. We'll talk about it in the closing remarks. All right, coming up right after this closing remarks. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve. Here we are, our last break of the day on this historic Monday. After that historic presidential election and the race and the decision finally <clears throat> on Saturday. Mm, Woo. Yeah. Mm. You know what? You were about to uh, lose your child. It's, it's, been a, it's, it's, it's been amazing, man, because in closing, I, I, I want to say this to, to uh, our listeners. On behalf of Shirley Carla, Jr., Jay, and Kia, and Tommy, um, we, we we want to tell you that we're very proud of you and your turnout. And as we relish in this victory, we do realize now that a couple of things have happened. Number one, we prove to ourselves and to so many others that we matter. We watched in real time as votes got counted. We proved finally to a lot of us, even in our own community, that we have to vote because our vote does count. And finally we had living proof of it. You can't even deny it. Uh, the, the second thing we learned is there's still so much to be done. We got to get back to work. We were celebrating, got it, but there's still work to be done. Uh, they haven't trouble trying to figure out what this election is about. Uh, Mitch McConnell or uh, Lindsey Graham, whichever one it was, uh, which one was on TV Saturday night? Uh, Lindsey Graham talking about we go, we we behind you, we back you, fight this all the way to the end. This illegal election. There's nothing illegal has happened. They don't have one piece of evidence to put forward right now. They're waiting on people to drum up stuff and build a case, but it's going to get handled and it'll be done with. And he was saying in there, which surprised me, was the biggest election we've ever had in the history of our American population. And how in the world did Joe Biden get more votes than Barack Obama in certain areas? I'll tell you why. Because we had the biggest turnout ever. You know why we had the biggest turnout ever? Because we registered more black people to vote than when Obama ran. 
we have more. We have those black people registered, and we went out and we got new people registered. That's why we have the turnout we had in the black community. But that's why we had to turn out in all communities. And the real reason we had the biggest turnout in the history of our country ain't because of how we felt about Biden or Trump. It's because of COVID, because we were at all at home, focused and looking at something for the first time. There was no distractions this year. We had nothing to do but vote. Vote gave us some, voting gave us something to do. So that's the reason we had the big turnout. And the big reason we had the big turnout, Donald Trump, is because you helped make COVID so big in this country. Look, you're not the cause of COVID. I'm not saying that. Trump didn't give us COVID, but Trump so gave us more of it than we should have had. That's for doggone show. And now since you gave us COVID, partner, now everybody at home dealing with COVID, partner, now we all voting uh, because the Democrats got a theme and we didn't want to be in that social distancing and part of that voter suppression, we voted by mail. You knew we was voting by mail. That's why you had your postmaster general take up all the mailboxes. Dog, you saw this coming, homie. That's why you ain't, you're not in the White House because of your own doing. And I remember the president saying something. Let's make America great again. He kept saying that. Let's make America great again. So you know what? We did. We did just that. We voted to get rid of one of the major reasons why America wasn't about to be great. It was because of you. All of your words have come back to haunt you. The reason you're struggling in Arizona is because of the way you treated McCain. The reason you're struggling in Arizona is because you pardoned uh, Sheriff Joe, who was a racist against all Latinos in that area. That's why you're struggling, man. You're struggling because you not one time gave us one word of condolence during the Black Lives Matter movement. You never said anything to us to make us feel better or or make us calm down and and like, man, I understand your pain and we've got to fix racial justice. But you know what, man? You just didn't have nothing to say about it. So guess what? Black lives didn't matter to you. So we got tired of you, man. That's why you ain't the president no more. That's why you had to sit up there and watch Detroit flip the script on you. That's why you had to sit up there and watch Atlanta turn Georgia blue. That's why you had to sit up there and watch Pennsylvania. And the number keeps getting higher and higher. That's why you're not the president anymore. Because we all got sick of your hatred, your disrespect, your systemic racism, your divisiveness. We got sick of you killing us. We got tired every time we tried to tell you that black lives matter, you kept telling us how much blue lives matter. We don't, we not saying nobody else's lives matter. Just can ours matter just like yours. And I'm going to tell you one last thing, Mr. President, that I've been wanting to say to you on behalf of me and anybody that feel like me. Black people don't care if you don't do nothing for us, but we do care about what you keep doing to us. That's why your ass is going out the White House in January, because what you keep trying to do to us, selling it to us. Bye, Mr. President. Do your recount and file your lawsuits, and in January we're going to need you to move your stuff on out. I got moving money. Oh, we'll We're help you do it. To the yes. Yes. have to come to down the there and help you move. <laughs> we'll Did you say one away. more minute? Uh-huh. Yes. yes. Oh, okay, minutes, cool. Steve. Yeah. You, you have, we have moving money for you. We got, <laughs> it's going to be a great day. We got moving money. We and listen to me, y'all. Money. Don't get discouraged about all these filing lawsuits and the Republicans not want to come right. around. Donald Trump has hijacked the Republican Party and now made it the Donald Trump Party. So they're all behaving like him. It's a few that's not, but it's a... So listen to me. What we have to do now in Georgia, we're going to show them that it wasn't a fluke. We're going to get to you all the information you need. And see, these ain't just black people. He won 75 million votes. It ain't 75 million black people in America. It's a lot of people sick of Donald Trump. We're going to show you something in Georgia. The re-election going to belong to ours, too. The runoff. Woo! Bye. Mm. (laughs) Bye. And Black vote is real. Congratulate buddy. the man. <laughs> 
For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 